Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. So some wagon trains are um, get up, pack up, and move every day. Uh -huh. Some wagon trains are like wagon wheels with the spokes that go out. Yep. Yours is kind of a hybrid. Yeah, you know, the guys in Tennessee that I rode with down there, they did kind of the same thing. It was every other day, um, and I really liked that. Uh, I, like, I like the moving wagon trains, uh, but man, I get tired. <laughs> you know? it, it eats up the day. You know, when you, when you pull the trailers ahead at 6 a.m. every day, it, it's kind of exhausting. And, and some of the some of the cloverleaf ones, I like them too, but uh, you, you, you double, you go on a lot of the same roads sometimes. Right. And so I thought, I'd, I'd like to do an every other day one, because uh, every other day then you get to not get up and rush, get to get up, drink coffee, relax. Next day you got to get up a little earlier and get trailers moved, but uh, I, that's how I kind of want to do it that way. I grew up in town, in Pine Island, Minnesota, uh, and the saddle club would come into town and give wagon rides for the cheese festival or what they call Moonlight Madness or for, you know, whatever the local town event would be. And I just loved riding the wagon. And I would hop in with who would ever let me hop in with them and try to stay the whole day. And I probably was a little annoying to some of them, but. Uh, one of the old guys, Bob Nozier, I, he just took favor on me or something, and I would ride with him the whole day, and he'd tell me about driving the team and the harnessing and what you're doing, and, and then a lot of times he'd drive his team back to his house, so I'd ride with him home, and then uh, I got a little older, I think I was 12, and him and his wife invited me to go along on the friendship ride, and um, well... I haven't missed a friendship ride yet. I'm 35 now, so uh, so you know I you know I ended up uh, after a lot of negotiating and, and convincing. Uh, my parents did buy me a saddle horse, uh, and so I had a saddle horse for a long time. I had several saddle horses uh, over the years there, and uh, but I always just kind of like doing the wagon thing, and I wanted to get back to that, uh, and so. Slowly but surely, uh, I had a team before this one from Bob's son. His name is Shine. He's on this ride. I guess that was the first team I had that I took on rides uh, on my own. And then I was down on the Alabama wagon train one year, and uh, I was working in Arkansas at the time. And I decided I I was ready to buy a team. And so on the Alabama ride, uh, I just kind of asked around, you know, just. 30, 40, 50 wagons right. come through that ride. Right. And I want to know if there was a team for sale somewhere. And uh, a guy by the name of Charles Penny, oh, yeah, I got a team of mules I'd sell you, you know. And uh, so I started looking at them. And, uh, so I watched that team on the Alabama ride. So that's a 10 day, 200 mile ride. Watched him drive, and then he just started driving the hat mule here. Um, and I thought, you know, I think they look like they'll work. And then one of the last days, we were uh, coming down the road and met a big garbage truck, and the garbage truck stopped and lifted the front boom up and dumped the trash into the thing right as this team was going by. I know, of course, they jumped around, but they didn't run away or go crazy. And right. I said, yeah, I, I think I can get along with them. Yeah. <laughs> so I brought them home. It was a good test. <laughs> uh, and at the time, you know, she was two and she was five. And 
so now that's that's been 12 years ago wow so uh we we've driven a lot of miles i i look at my hobby and over the years i've spent a lot of money on it but then you know a friend go buy a thirty thousand dollars side by side and i well i guess, I guess maybe this isn't so bad right you know? exactly. so some of the stuff you buy slowly you know you right we got the truck and then the trailer over the years and then the harness and the, you know it just kind of all accumulates instead of the, the sticker shock <laughs> right right but, but yeah this this is uh this is the hobby um, and a lot of the people that come are uh, more on the retired side to where they can afford to do this kind of stuff right um, and have the time to do it I'm I'm not on the retired side but this this is my thing so this is kind of weird uh, different my, my my finances get focused at times all right so what's involved in putting on one of these logistically <laughs> well uh, I, I think one of the things you have to start with is a place to camp and I know you know, like with the friendship wagon train, that is really hard to find. Because they, they move so many times, uh, and they have a big crowd. And so, finding a place to camp to start with where we can all come in and park and not upset anyone when we have that many animals and stuff camp there, uh, that's, that's the first thing. And so, you know, like with Doc Men's place there, you know, his, his guest ranch set up. He's happy to have us. We got room. Uh, it worked out uh, to have that place. And then, you know, that, that would be too far for us to ride from there to uh, Wild West Days. So this place we're camped at there is it's another belongs to the Amish. It's a produce auction house. Uh, and we were able to get that for a campsite. And then once we get to the grounds, of course, the club there has land for us to camp on. So uh, that, that's, I think that's the hardest thing is getting the campsites. Um, from there, on this ride, we do a couple meals. Uh, we don't do all the meals because, you know, I, I'd like to try to do more, but without knowing how many people are coming and then without knowing how many people sign up to come and then are not going to come if right. something happens. Uh, we haven't right. really done that. Or, or you don't just just don't do that yet. Maybe we'll do it someday, but uh, it's that, not exactly a hardship for people to make their own dinners or go no, into town. No, I I say we're we're within ten minutes of a restaurant the whole ride if you want, um, and we we don't we're not doing terribly long days, right. so you got the time to cook some. And some people like to do that cooking, right? Um, Absolutely. Uh, uh, then start laying out trails, and uh, I, I do Google Maps. You know, I kind of know this area, but I'll do Google Maps to kind of get a, uh, an idea of, well, how much mileage would it be if we went that way or this way? And then um, I go out and drive the trails in the car, because then I have to see, all right, look good on the map. Is it going to look good with a wagon and a team? And, and then with having different people from flatter areas, you gotta look at the hills and decide, okay, uh, you know, us guys that ride around here all the time, we got light wagons, we got teams that are kind of used to it. We go up pretty well everything. Right. But inviting people is like, well, I don't want to invite somebody here and then have them just not enjoy themselves because their team couldn't make the ride or, you know, they just, uh, so checking trails, uh, checking mileage, checking terrain, uh, that's kind of the, one, one of the steps. Uh, and then, then it, then it comes down to the uh, you know, uh, buses for our shuttling um, and uh, water and porta potties. <laughs> it's it's kind of what it gets down to. Uh, Kelly Kraft from Albert City, Iowa. I got a team of Belgian Molly Mules. Uh, Kate and Babe. They're 18. They're our young team. Our old team was. 22 and 32, so we decided to retire them. Semi-retire them. <laughs> sure, sure. Did you raise them up? You bought no, them? No, you bought we, them. We, yeah. we bought them. It's hard to get 
hard to raise him because he can breed the same mating 20 times and get 20 different right 20 different combinations right and now there's an older gentleman in uh, St. Joe, Missouri that had him at the auction in, in Maryville and we were looking and to be what we wanted, so we're happy with them. We've got uh, almost 300 miles on them now. So. Really? Wow. It's been a slow year though. So. We've been to Oklahoma and Iowa and then this ride. So. so the Oklahoma, that's a wagon train that you did out there? Yep, yep, the 89ers. Okay. Put on a, on a ride down there. And How'd you go. get connected? That's a little ways to go, right? Yeah, yeah. We met uh, a lot of the Teamsters when we were all on a ride out in Deadwood, South Dakota. I got gotcha. you. So. Okay. And some of the 89ers followed us up here. So. Sure. Yeah, you're kind of like one big family when you get to wagon training. So. Yeah. In fact, a lot of these folks have met. The two couples from South Dakota and Nathan, uh, Bob Quackenbush, all of those guys were on the Deadwood ride. So. And we all just take turns going to somebody else's ride. So. Yeah. Nathan and Bob were at ours last year, which they were organizing this one this year. So. But we came up last year for Nathan's ride, the first ride. So. Wisconsin's beautiful. So. How long have y'all had mules? Oh, about 18 years, Kelly. Yeah, 18 or 19. 18 years, yeah. Well, our old team is 22 and she was four, so yeah, it'd be 18 years. Did you work horses before that, or yeah, Paul is that your up, background? Paul grew up with draft horses. Okay. Yeah, I grew up when my dad and me had 32 Belgians one time, and we broke them from the bottom of colts and paired them up and we broke them and sold them as big hitch horses. Big hitch horses and made quite a bit of money on them. It, right. It was a pretty good time. Then the horse market kind of went down and we kind of didn't buy so many after that. I raised a lot of saddle mules for about four or five years and sold them to the outfitters out in Wyoming and the Tetons. And people, people that are People that are into this are just really hospitality. They're, they're, they're really good, good hard people. And, and they get along, they help each other. And, and it's the same way with them thrashing bees. Oh, it's itchy and it's hot and it's sweaty. But boy, to see the people that don't know nothing about it come and watch. And they're just in awe. Of it. Right. And it's pretty cool to do that. And the younger generation is so hard to get somebody that will accept that itchy, hot, sweaty, hard work. <laughs> an old friend that uh, went to school with and he worked for a guy that did wagon training and we did a few with that saddle horse and anyway that one thing led to another and decided to get our own team and go from there spent a lot of hours at it now sure over the years do you usually drive light horses yes okay uh, they I probably ride more than I drive. Okay. And so. Yeah, so it makes sense. Multi Multi-purpose. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm not real good with uh, breeds of light horses. Are these quarter horses? The yes. one on the right, both are. Both are quarter yep. horses. Okay. Uh, the left one is a registered quarter horse. Okay. The right one, Mama was registered, and we don't know what Daddy was. Sure. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's got a little thoroughbred look to him, but. Right. Right. So, so they're a little bit different height. Do they work pretty good together? They work same stride, good, yeah. Uh huh? Yeah, yeah. She she'll jig and jog, but she can walk with him if she wants to. But yeah, yeah. Uh, most of the time, she don't want to. So it's a mare and a gelding. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. How old are they? Um, she's twenty, 
and he's seven, maybe eight. Okay. Twenty. She's doing really good for twenty. She huh? is doing good. I hope That's she kinda... makes it about another two years. I've got a yearling and a two-year-old at home that are meant to replace these two. But yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll see how that works out. Right, for right. Me. It'd be nice to have them for breaking horses for when yeah, you bring them yeah. along. Yep. Yeah. We'll we'll see how that goes. But Where I, do you ride? Um, Lots of places. Yes, we've uh, rode. Uh, we live right by a state park, Wildcat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they've got, I think, 20, they claim 20-some miles of trails. Right. And we also load up and go to the Black Hills riding, and also one of the favorite trips is the, no, oh, what is it called? Uh, Wind River. It's a wilderness area in Wyoming. We do oh, nice. Buffalo intensely. Nice. Uh, Bad, Battle Park's the name of the trailhead. Okay. And we've done that in a lot of years. Southern Illinois down in Shawnee, ridden that. Also Missouri, uh, what's the name of that? Uh, Eminence. Oh, okay. Yeah, for their, their sure. big ride. We were down there once for that. Okay. Someday we'll go back, but uh, big crowds ain't, I'm not a big right. fan of big crowds. Right, so. right, it's a lot of hassle. But it's, it's worth seeing once, how, okay. they, how they can put that many people put them up and put them through the meals and all that stuff in the time that they do it it's what I was quite amazed so. you um you like they're different they're very different driving a wagon and riding a horse so maybe you can't compare it do you like riding more than driving I do like riding more yeah um, more I, freedom yeah more freedom and I've been doing it since I was five six years yeah. old and uh driving came about my son got thrown when he was 12 years old off a horse okay broke his hip and couldn't ride anymore sure but he still wanted to do the horses right so we uh took two of the horses that were out in the pasture and they knew more about driving than we did huh. him and me okay. and they'd never had a harness on them so it, we were a big wreck waiting to happen and, okay but we got th we got through the learning stage and stuck with it so this is a nice unit yep. it's also got sentimental value an old friend of mine built this to fit in the horse trail yeah okay right yeah he lost his wife three four years after that okay lost interest in it and uh he tried for two or three years more years and he just uh, finally decided he'd had enough. Sold me his trailer, which I have at the camp right now. But I didn't want the wagon. I already had a nice a wagon yeah. that we really like and stuff. And so he sold it to another friend of mine. I kept it in mind. My other friend wanted wanted a wagon, and I got them together. And then he had 92, he decided he would live long enough, so his son got it. And... The next spring, I decided that maybe I did want that way. Went back. Oh, so it works real well when her, just her and me are going. Sure. Don't have to take two vehicles to get us there. Right, it's nice and compact. Yep. Yeah. Works nice. They are used to being in the lead. Yeah. So it's uh, unusual for them to follow any other ones. Yep. Nathan said something about that. He asked me on Tuesday if I wanted to lead. That no, I lead enough. I, I kind of like it from back here. I'm sure. Sure. Get to see all the entertainment up ahead of you. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452.
Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.